Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Good to see you all. Today, and really for the next like four days, I am paddling on Topsail Island in uh, North Carolina. So sort of south of the Outer Banks, north of Cape Lookout. I was here, I think last year when we did a, um, a Topsail Island paddle town. I'm back here for a couple days to paddle, and it's a great place to talk about currents. Let's go. Okay, so I've already done a video about tides. If you haven't seen that video, you should probably watch that. It's mainly about finding the next high tide for your campsite, but it's important for us to understand tides when we're gonna talk about currents, because a lot of people confuse the two. So tides are the vertical movement of water, and currents are the horizontal movement of water, but frequently, like here, a tide will have a current associated with it. Um, and so the thing to understand is that we talk about tides flooding and ebbing. So tides coming in as a flooding tide, tides going out are an ebbing tide. And what's happening actually is that the level of water is rising. And as the level of water rises, it covers more land because there is more water. When it's covering that land, it's moving into areas where it wasn't before and that's where you get a current. So some places you get really strong currents, some places you barely get any current. Right here, where I'm paddling the next four days, we get really strong currents, and here's why. So as the water level rises, as the flood comes in, it just starts covering more and more land. And that normally wouldn't be a problem, but just south of me is a narrow inlet. And so as the water starts to cover more land, it wants to go through that opening. But the problem is that opening is pretty narrow. And so it's like putting your thumb over the end of a hose and that forces the water through there pretty quickly. And the same thing happens when the water level is dropping. Uh, the water is rushing out of the sound side here and out through that narrow opening. And we see the same things on all these barrier islands on the southeast coast. You know, the, the core sound emptying out into the Atlantic Ocean, the Pamlico sound, all those sounds empty out into the ocean when the tide goes down and fill back up when the tide comes in. And they're all squeezing water through little openings, which gives us a lot of current. The water is going from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, and it's racing in there to fill in that void. That's why we get currents. Other things can make currents, but it's always a pressure differential of water going from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. It's filling in and evening out. Um, and you have to think about what those currents are gonna do when you're going paddling, or what, what's gonna happen in terms of what's the tide doing, and how is that gonna affect the current? And so I start my mornings here by looking at the tide chart and then figuring out, or doing my best to figure out, what's actually gonna be happening on the water. Okay, so this is where we are, well, this is where we are. This is where we tried to put in last time, but it was too busy. And so we can put in here, but the water is still flooding. I need to double check that, but I think water is flooding. So we could paddle in here. We could do this little loop. The water is probably flooding in both of these, but because of the curves, I think there'll be less current in here, I think, but I could be wrong because I haven't paddled in there. Again, we're here. We could go right back over here to the bridge. I just noticed this last night. This is like super simple put in. There's a boat ramp. Is there sand someplace? There might be sand someplace where we can put in. Um, and then paddle in here where there will be much less current. Um, and might just be a nice first day paddle, get literally get our feet wet. So that's option two, and then of course we could also go back there at some point. But what are your thoughts for today? Today's Thursday. Yeah. I think if there's a 
I mean, it's, it's off season. It's probably not going to be crowded on a Friday. But my first thought was go down to the option A today. Beach has because we had such issues last time. Granted, it was what Labor Day. It was a holiday of some sort. Yeah. yeah. Um, you make a good argument about doing the easiest today, the first day. But I'm, I was thinking drive down and check out option A first. Okay, I'm fine with that. I wish that one of these, I like this new thing, but I wish one of these, there was a tides option mm. would be cool. Okay, so the first thing that was wrong from that briefing this morning, we are down at the very south end of Topsail Island um, and it's, it wasn't flooding, it's ebbing. You can definitely see looking at this, that this is ebbing out. Um, so we're just gonna paddle into it for probably an hour, turn around, let it bring us back for probably 20 minutes. that pulled you back there. So let's paddle up a little bit, see how it feels. If we cross to the other side, um, I think there'll be both, depending on how close we get, there'll be less current and less wind. And so if you're okay with it, I would head over there now. We're angled a little bit, but yeah, let's just watch our left to make sure there isn't a boat racing in here because we are crossing a channel. So besides in this situation, just being able to see the water leaving here, um, there are always hints, like visual cues to see what the water is doing. So I'm paddling up now to see one. So talk about poor planning, even with planning, we did some, made some mistakes. So it's ebbing, the tide is leaving, which means the current right now here is going with it pretty strongly. Add to that, we're right in the middle of the tide cycle. So we're about two and a half hours in. So not quite the fastest current that we'll get all day long, but pretty close to it. Let's have a little talk about how long a tide cycle works and when the most water is moving. We're close to when the most water is moving. Another part of this equation is just how much water is moving in the tide cycle. So an average tide cycle is about six hours and 15 minutes, give or take a little bit. Uh, and uh, so in those six hours, if it's going from low tide to high tide, in order to figure out the way the water is moving, we use the rule of 12s. And so what it's saying is in the first hour of that tide cycle, we're getting 1 12th of the water is moving through. In the second hour we're getting two twelfths in the third hour we're getting three twelfths so we're getting a curve up and then we're getting in the fourth hour we're getting three twelfths again then two twelfths then one twelfth so it makes a bell curve in the middle of the tide cycle is when the most water is moving through and that's what happened to us today we ended up getting on the water right in the middle of the tide cycle Look at the current moving around this channel marker as I paddle past it. It is actually leaning this way, which I think is just something weird with how it's mounted because the water is definitely going that way. Time to make a right. 30 seconds. 30 seconds till what? One hour. Oh, really? Bang a right. Turned around. Now we got the wind behind us and the current behind us. 
It took us an hour. Um, what did we come, Johnny? Two miles? 1.81. 1.81 miles. Let's see how long it takes us to get back. 1.81 miles. Not paddling. That's how fast we're going. That's a nice little beach. That is. Yes, it is. Got to figure out where that is. So without paddling, we're doing 4.8 miles per hour south just with current. That's what we were fighting coming in. So I'm pretty happy with fighting a four knot current <laughs> that we were still managing close to two knots is pretty good. Your rudder up, my friend. Would you have forgot? Yeah. Okay. I forget that all the time. Oh, and it went right in its holder. You're so good. <laughs> Was there... Is there a chance that it wouldn't? Oh yeah, if it's not straight, it'll uh, go left or right. That makes sense. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. When you're having a good day, it lands in the holder. When you're having a bad day. You go after Johnny. So it took us an hour to go north, hour and eight minutes, 15 minutes coming back. And that right there is currents. Headed to today's paddle. Uh, it's an hour past high tide, but we're further from the tide station, so I am not sure uh, what the water is going to be doing where we are. And we're we're on the sound side, but the tide station's on the sound side, so that should be good. But it's pretty far away, so we will see. So it's an hour past high, as I said, uh, and it actually looks right here pretty slack. We've got a wind out of the north. But uh, it looks pretty slack right here. Oh, enough wind that there's a sailboat. This is the intracoastal waterway. Uh, yeah, this should be nice. Boat traffic, lots of boat traffic. This is one of those areas that are you're only allowed to park here if you're launching a boat, so I always wonder if they'll recognize the, the kayak cradles and realize that I am in fact launching a boat, or if I'm going to come back to it with a ticket. We'll find out. At least I don't have to pay here. At Topsail Inlet, we had to pay 10 bucks to paddle for two hours. So we're going to paddle out, it's relatively protected in here, even though we're getting a fair amount of wind, we're going to paddle out to the Intracoastal Waterway, which is what we're going to be paddling in today. Our plan is to paddle north and circle an island and paddle back south, but uh, I, I want to see what, if there is current, what the current's doing. It looked like it was pretty slack, um, and it should be ebbing out that way, so that would help us paddling north, circle the island, come back, paddle back with the water, but we'll see. This is the confusing part, even though we're an hour past high and the tide station we're using is to the south, there is another inlet to the north of us, but it's further away. But in theory, that could affect the way the water is going because there's all sorts of local influences and maybe the water is coming from there. So maybe even though it's ebbing, it'll be going this direction anyway. So you gotta, even no matter what the tide chart says or the current, indicators on the chart say you gotta use the mark one eyeball and figure out what the hell is going on but yeah if we go to the right we'll also be paddling into the wind which is good for the way back it's good for the way back yeah so it does seem that we have the current going with us because it's probably ebbing out of that other inlet, even though it's pretty far away. We're gonna have current helping us. We're gonna have current helping us on the way north while we're fighting the wind, which is gonna make for a rocky ride um, because that wind and current are gonna hit each other and stand up the waves. Um, and then on the way back, we're gonna have current hurting us and wind helping us. Do they equal each other out? I'll tell you in an hour. 
Johnny, I missed the dead giveaway of the current. The sailboat. It's nose into the current. Unless it's got an anchor off the back also. You know the rules about marine mammals, right? 100 yards. If they break the rules, it's okay. But I would almost say for the sake of safety, we can't really go out past them. Yeah, so let's go left a little bit and maybe they'll come visit us. And Johnny, is that the island we want straight in front of us? dead giveaway of the current while we're looking at dolphins is the wind is pushing this way but I'm not really moving because the current's going this way. Just perfect conditions today. Even with the wind, even with the current. Just really beautiful paddling here in Topsail. And that's, we gave it a four for easy access to great paddling last year. Water break. Water break? Bottom water break. So proud of you. Union water break. Yeah, and then you look, and then you look to your right, and you, and you see the land. The same thing that yeah, you saw yeah, I've done that. I I have had that experience. Through the hole. Through the hole. Bear right, and look for a, a pointy end of the island. Whoa! Did you feel that? Yeah. That was current kicking my boat to the right. They couldn't get in there as soon as we got out here. That's wild. Whew. Yeah, we got some water moving. I, I, we might get a double push south. I'm glad you did that. Now. Again, this is sort of proof that you never know what you're going to get. In here, it's really squirrely on the sound side. and, and uh, Squirrely and squirrely. Squirrely and windy. And, yeah, we might get a nice push because we're... This water looks like it's going the direction we want it to go. And if we go under the bridge, we went too far. Because yeah. <laughs> I just turned around and was like, oh look, a bridge. That's where we left from. That's an easy landmark. Boy, we how far did we come? We didn't come very far. 46 minutes, how far? Further than yesterday. Not very far, but that was just amazing paddling. Yeah, let's see what it's doing. And if we get away from the island a little bit, we'll get more push. But I'm also in no hurry. Terry, stop paddling for one second just so Johnny can catch up to you, you speed demon. 3.3. Knots? Or something, yeah, we don't know. Going in, but going in the right direction, obviously. Yeah. I, I suspect that's going to end when we get around the island. Uh, yeah. I could be wrong, but I suspect it's going to end. And if it does, we should cut to the far side because yeah. we may be able to pick it up over there. And my boat, with my rudder up, you're not experiencing this because you have your rudder down. My boat really wants the ass to come around, and that's the current grabbing the tail. If you, yeah, if you pick your rudder up, you'll feel it, but you don't need to pick your rudder up. Yeah. Are you warm? Uh, I'm comfortable. Okay. I'm glad I went jacketless. I could have. Because I'm comfortable sure. as well. Yeah, I think I would be comfortable without. Weird little currents in here. Big current change right here. 
Oh yeah, this current's going north. Alright, see this little plastic thing up here by the two tails? Yeah, I think it's a gazebo. Oh yeah, that's good. Well, that was fun. Ooh, cool. But still, we had it south till about there. Yep. So day three of our trip to Topsail, playing with currents. We're back where we were on day one. We're gonna do something a little bit differently, but we still have to get on the water and evaluate current. It should be ebbing, uh, and it looks like it's ebbing, but we'll see when we get on the water. But now we've got this big section of standing waves because it's low tide. Uh, so that's gonna change our plan a little bit because that's right where we were gonna go through. And I think it's probably too shallow for us to go through there anyway and there are standing waves. And the way that I know that it's too shallow is that we can literally, with the binoculars, see birds standing amidst the, the edges of the waves. Um, so we're just gonna reevaluate once we get on the water and uh, have some fun with the currents. And I think we're gonna head to the Intracoastal Waterway and have all over there today. Uh, let's get on the water. This is the most wind and the most chop we've had all week. So my goal is to not paddle in it if I don't have to. And we're gonna head across and then try and get into some protection from land. Oh yeah. Super interesting, underwater, all these grasses are flowing that way, which means there's still current coming in, but there's enough wind going this way that we're feeling it that way. Because I'm seeing lots of contradictory indicators of what the current is doing in here. And that's just the, the lesson of this lesson is you can't always believe charts, you can't always believe predictions. You gotta get out on the water, see what it's doing and make a judgment call. So I'm sort of as the three of us are paddling, constantly reevaluating. Are we paddling into something that we can't paddle against to get back? And so I just did a little test. I just turned around, paddled 30 seconds back into it. It's doable, it's not terribly hard right here in close. It's probably worse out there, but it's doable. So just a check uh, and you've got to test things out and get a feel for them and see where you are in terms of your skills. Yeah, right here. I bet you we can just cut this whole little channel off. The beauty of being a kayak. Woo! Who needs a channel? <laughs> Big headwind now. We've done really well this trip. We've, we've had no dead flat calm days. Um, but we've had really good luck in terms of having currents helping us and not having to fight too hard. But today we're racking our brains and still are paddling into winds. Uh, when we were out there, the wind was coming south, so we thought in here we'd be good. But uh, big headwind. So we're gambling that we didn't paddle all the way up to the channel we had planned. We're gambling that this goes through because we saw a boat go in to it. But yeah, we can't actually see where anything is. We see where we can see where we want to be, but not what's around. It's so hard with your butt at sea level to see what connects and what doesn't.
Actually, I think there's a lot of current, but it's pushing us where we want to go. Oh, okay. Dead end? Oh, I see water on the other side. I think so. Johnny just disappeared into the reeds like Field of Dreams. <laughs> yeah. This became a uh an exploration we got suckered in because we saw what we saw a boat go in and it looked like it uh, was going really fast we're like oh it must it must be a path through that isn't on the map and if he can make it we can make it Ugh. versus we knew we had a channel a mile and a half north so now we're on an exploration. <laughs> I think she found the way through. That we managed to do that without having to get out and walk. Very lucky. Yeah, nice we're job. Just, we're just going right there. We're just going right there. And it looks like the current is now going out. Uh, so however you want to get there. How do you want to get there? Your call. All right. No boat traffic. No. Yep. Solid decision. All right. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Good. Let's go. Okay, so that is three days of paddling in currents in Topsail, North Carolina. Great place to come and play with currents. Uh, if this content works out for you well, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. My books are available on Amazon. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, you can do that on coffee. Links for all that stuff is down below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the water.